Arizona's Dead Mall Gold is produced by Retail Archaeology and is seen worldwide on this VHS tape. Hello everybody, I am Eric Pearson from Retail Archaeology and welcome to Arizona's Dead Mall Gold. We'll be taking a look at three malls in the Phoenix area throughout their twilight years. Behind me is Fiesta Mall, which closed a few years ago but is still standing here empty to this day. And that's the first mall we'll be taking a look at, so let's get started. The first mall we'll be taking a look at is Fiesta Mall in Mesa, Arizona. This place opened in 1979 and was developed by Homart Development Company. If you're not familiar with Homart Development Company, that was Sears Mall Building Company. Sears used to build malls. The footage that we're watching right now is the first footage that I ever filmed for the Retail Archaeology channel on YouTube. Right before this was filmed, I had a friend that came over for dinner and he had a job delivering office supplies at the time. And he happened to have a delivery here and he said to me, hey, have you been to Fiesta Mall lately? And I said, no, I, I haven't. It's been at least, you know, 10, 12 years since I've been there. And he said, well, you've, you've got to see it. It's the weirdest thing. Almost all the stores are closed. There's really hardly any foot traffic at all. And it seems like the place should be closed, but it's not. And I thought that sounded really kind of weird and interesting. And I figured, hey, maybe I should go visit Fiesta Mall, you know, one last time before the place shuts down because it sounds like it's not good. So not only was this the first dead mall that I ever filmed, this was also the first time I had ever been inside a dead mall. Spending five minutes in here was so bizarre that I pulled out my phone and started filming and taking pictures. And this also happened to be the first time that I got yelled at by security in a mall for filming. It's happened several times since, but this was the first time. And uh, once he walked away after he told me there was no photography in the mall, um, I pulled my phone out and kept filming. I just was more sneaky about it. I ended up sitting on all the footage that I filmed here for a few months because I really wasn't sure what to do with it. I did have a YouTube channel at the time, but I covered retro video games and toys and things like that. And this just didn't really make sense for, for that YouTube channel. Uh, I started doing more research and I realized that this is a more common thing that I thought. And it was like so weird and interesting that I decided I wanted to go you know, see and film more of this stuff. So I decided I would start a, another channel, the Retail Archaeology channel, for these kind of videos, for videos covering dead malls and weird retail stuff. Now that I'm watching all of this footage again, the first thing that I think of is that when I was here, you know, filming this, I thought to myself, wow, this place is not going to be around for another week or two. I mean, it's so dead. But surprisingly, it made it longer than that. At this point, there were a few anchors still open. There was the Best Buy there, there was also a Sears that was opened, and a Dillard's. Although the Dillard's only was occupying the bottom floor because it was a clearance center now. And then a lone hot topic there. It's hard to describe the feeling when you're in a dead mall like this. It's it's sad, especially when it's one that you you know went to as a kid. It's it's very sad, but it's also weird and almost comforting in a way. It's it's a very strange feeling. If you've never been in a dead mall before, I would highly recommend you know finding your closest dead mall because I'm sure there is one and you know exploring it. You'll notice too, there are a few people hanging around the mall still. There's a few people, you know, walking around, although a lot of them are mall walkers, which if you're not familiar with what that is, it's old people that walk laps around the mall because it's a free air conditioned place to get a little bit of exercise. And there's a few other big names in here as well, besides the anchors like Bath and Body Works, K Jewelers. The jewelry stores always seem to be some of the last things to go at a dead mall, and so is GNC. The escalators were still working at this point too. That's something that you see quite a bit at dead malls is escalators that no longer work because the maintenance is kind of expensive on them. It's also still pretty bright because all the lights are running. Believe it or not, it does, it does get worse than this. That Sears there was one of the last things to close at this mall. I believe it closed with the mall itself, which is fitting since Sears 
basically developed this place originally. What's also kind of sad to think about is this mall did get a full cosmetic remodeled not too long before this footage was filmed, and it didn't seem to help at all. And here's the food court, and you can see here there's a few things still open and there's some people here, but as you'll see throughout the video, it gets much worse. The next time I visited Fiesta Mall was right after Christmas. I wanted to see if the Christmas shopping season had helped anything here, and what I found was a even quieter mall. In front of us is the former Macy's store, which closed in early 2014. And nothing ever ended up replacing it. I do remember seeing this place in the mid and late 90s, which ended up being this mall's peak. Starting in the early 90s and going all the way through to the early 2010s, there were a lot of malls and huge shopping centers built throughout the Phoenix area, and a lot of them weren't too far from this one. And that's what really started Fiesta Mall's demise. On this second trip, I saw something else that I had never seen before, which was a completely empty and gutted mall anchor. When we look through the window here, we can see the only thing that's left is the escalators in the middle. During this trip, I saw how much worse it had gotten, and I decided that I would come back here every couple of months while it was still open to film update footage. It really is so much quieter now. There's far fewer people walking around. The food court was also much emptier. At this point, I think there was only two places open. And it seemed like at this point, they were mostly serving the employees that were still working at the couple of stores that were open and the couple of anchors that were still left. I always thought that was interesting that the Claire's had a window into the food court. Who knows how old those gumballs were at this point. A lot of them looked really faded. I always thought that was cool, that neon sign, but I never got to see it actually lit up. I think originally this was a Johnny Rockets. There's a lot of dust on those countertops. Notices like this are always helpful to find when you're trying to figure out when something closed, but that was the Panda Express, which was open earlier in the video. I also figured while I was here, I should, you know, get something to eat, since it'll probably be the last time I ever eat something in this food court. So I ended up grabbing the teriyaki chicken special from the uh, Sakura Grill place. It was pretty good. Surprisingly, the big elevator in the center point of the mall was still running. A lot of times these are other types of things that kind of stop working as malls start to really decline. And at this point, the Bath and Body Works was still holding on too. They always seem to manage to last till the very end at a lot of malls that are dying. At this point, the Best Buy was also closed. This is something else I had never seen before, a completely empty Best Buy. I think it's pretty interesting because even though there's nothing left in here, if I asked you what you thought this was, you would probably say it's an empty Best Buy. You can just tell that's what it was. There were times where I felt like I was the only person in this mall. Now this was my last trip to Fiesta Mall in October 2017 and I filmed this in the evening. Somehow this mall was still open to the public. I didn't add those sounds in. That's what I was hearing while I was walking around filming. 
I had assumed I was just hearing the sounds of kids in the play place echoing throughout the mall because that got treated as basically a free indoor air-conditioned playground. But we'll see in a minute or two that that definitely wasn't where it was coming from. I guess there was just random kids shrieking running through the mall in the middle of the night, which isn't weird or creepy at all. I really did feel like a security guard was going to jump out at any minute though and yell at me for filming and kick me out. I think there was only one security guard though at this point, and he can't be everywhere at once. Seeing this made it pretty obvious that this mall really was not long for this world. And that ended up being the case, it closed just a few months later in January 2017. I really do love this shot, out of everything I've filmed in Fiesta Mall, I, I think this might be my favorite. There's the Torrid, which is still open. One of the very few things still open here. This still remains one of the eeriest filming sessions I've ever had. It's crazy to think that this mall is this dead at this point when just in 2004, Avril Lavigne gave a concert there in that roped off stage. This mall used to be packed with people. At this point, they had given up on manning the security desk and customer service desk. I think there was just a phone number on a plaque that said if you needed help or security, call this number. This one strip here in front of the Sears used to be where there were a couple of kiosks left that I think were selling like bootleg merchandise. But at this point, even all of those were gone. And that roped off section in front of us, that was the play place, so there's no way those yelling kids were coming from that. They had even ripped that out. The Sears though was still open. Completely empty but still open. I love that this sign that they're using to hold up the caution tape has a Twitter and Facebook logo on it. Like they needed those at this point. Yeah, sorry, out of order. <laughs> But yeah, that was the play place, and at this point they had ripped it out, so they must have known that they were shutting down. And that is a former Disney store, which was one of my favorite storefronts in this mall. There's their website, shopfiesta.com. It was pretty amazing that at this point I could just film the security guard desk. Now that I look back on it, I'm surprised this place lasted another three months. I'm also surprised that they haven't demolished this place yet, even though it's closed and completely empty, it still stands. You can drive around the parking lot of it, there's a Dutch Brothers coffee in the parking lot that gets very busy. It was supposed to be redeveloped, but it doesn't look like anything has been done to it. Now it's time to leave Fiesta Mall and move on to the next one. The second piece of Arizona Dead Mall Gold that we'll be taking a look at is Metro Center Mall in Phoenix, Arizona. This place opened in 1973 and was a joint development between West Core and Homart Development Company. Whenever I'm filming Dead Malls, I always like to film the map so that people can see you know, how big the place is and what stores are currently there. Although a lot of times these store lists are not accurate. They don't seem to update these very often especially when that update is just removing more stores from the list. Unlike Fiesta Mall, Metro Center Mall isn't really a mall that I grew up going to. It was about an hour away from my house and there were a couple of other malls much closer. I did come here at least once though that I remember when I was a really little kid. My dad took me to the arcade that was here. Now, it was much better than that arcade. It was a huge arcade that was um, below the food court. This, however, is kind of a sad arcade. Although, at least there are video games here. A lot of times the arcades that you tend to find in malls anymore are just, you know, skill cranes and prize machines and stuff. But they've even got a Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition cabinet there. You love to see it. The Sears is one of the mall's original anchors, and it's actually one of the busier Sears stores that I had ever been in. I was kind of surprised when that Sears closed earlier than some of the other ones in the Phoenix area. This was an interesting trip to Metro Center Mall because even though you can tell it's, it's a dead mall, there's tons of empty stores, there were some people walking around and 
I believe that's because it was Christmas time. You can see some of the Christmas lights there hanging from the ceiling in front of the GNC. And they also hang these big wreaths up all over the place. Being in a dead mall is weird on its own, but then when you visit one during Christmas time, it's even stranger. I think putting up all these Christmas decorations kind of has the opposite effect that they intended to have. I think it makes it even a little bit more depressing. I think out of all the times that I visited Metro Center Mall, not counting the time that I was a little kid, this was probably the busiest that I ever saw it. I mean, it actually doesn't look too bad in this shot. But this one corridor tended to be kind of the busiest corridor. And here's the only other open anchor store in the mall, the Dillard's Clearance Center. And here's a look at the food court, and as you can see, it actually looks kind of busy. I wouldn't really call it busy, but almost. But again, I think this is a side effect of it being Christmas time. Once you get away from the center of the mall and kind of get into the further corners of it though, you can see there's just tons of empty shops. I believe this was the last year that they had a mall Santa here. They did continue to put this Christmas tree up each Christmas, but they just put a red couch in front of it so that you could take pictures in front of the Christmas tree. During this trip to Metro Center Mall, I wanted to make sure and film the outside of all of the different department stores because some of them have some really unique architecture. There's the former Macy's and you can still see the prominent label scar in the side of the building. But what's even more impressive is the front. I love that. I'm a big fan of brutalist architecture and huge entryways like that. I also love that gold tile. Now this originally opened as a Goldwaters department store, thus the gold tile. Yeah, see I just love those tiles. There's so much detail. And here's a look inside. You can tell by looking at it, this is a very old department store. This Macy's closed at the beginning of 2015 and nothing ever replaced it. This is probably one of my favorite Sears stores. I love the way that this looks and it's also a huge Sears. It's actually three stories. It has a basement. It really reminds me of something out of an old film like Logan's Run or something. They really don't build stuff like this anymore. The Dillard's I always found super interesting as well. It's kind of an interesting pyramid shape type thing with the top cut off. This was originally a diamonds department store. Just what an interesting design for a department store. It almost seems more like a military installation though, like a bunker. And here's the former JCPenney store. This JCPenney closed in 2007 when it moved to Christown Mall, which unfortunately is another mall in the Phoenix area that they've announced is going to close soon. That is an elevator shaft that you could see through, you know, when you're going up and down the elevator back when this was a functioning department store. And here's a look inside, and you can see it's, it's quite the mess, although it has been empty for many years at this point. And here's a look through the windows, and you can see the elevator shaft there. It was interesting to see these escalators not working. You can see they built boxes up there to block them off, which means that once they stopped working, they really never had any intention of fixing them. Something that I really love about this mall is the amount of huge skylights that are throughout. It just lets a large amount of natural light into the mall. And I think that checker print tile looks fantastic with the natural light hitting it. It's interesting that even though the Sears is still one of the only open anchor stores in this mall, that this is also one of the deadest corridors. The Sears doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot for this mall at all.
That elevator is awesome too. This was a Saturday afternoon when I filmed this, and this is not what a mall is supposed to look like on a Saturday afternoon. You see what I mean? I just love the skylights in this mall. Yeah, you can see things are much, much quieter now than the previous visit. Now here's something I don't think helped this mall at all. There was an empty anchor building here. It was formerly a Broadway department store, but they tore that building down and replaced it with a Walmart, but didn't open it to the mall. It's just right on the other side of that wall. Also down on this end is the All for Anime store. This was actually one of the more popular stores in the mall. It's not very big, but people seem to enjoy it. At this point in the mall's life, the food court had also gotten a lot quieter. There are still some things open here, but there are not nearly as many people as there used to be. We're back at Metro Center Mall again for Christmas shopping season. And this unfortunately ended up being Metro Center Mall's last Christmas. The COVID-19 pandemic started just a few months after this, and that was the nail in the coffin for Metro Center Mall. It closed abruptly in June 2020. When I was filming this, I obviously didn't know that a global pandemic was going to start, but it really did feel like this was going to be Metro Center Mall's last Christmas anyways. Things had gotten pretty bleak here. The Sears had closed at this point. This end of the mall was already dead, but the closure of the Sears really doomed anything else that was still open down here. Even though I didn't have any real childhood history with this mall, I did really come to enjoy my time here during the multiple trips that I took. Another reason I really liked this mall is, if you weren't aware, this was the setting for San Dimas Mall in the Bill & Ted's Excellent Adventure film, which is one of my favorite movies. When I got to the food court, I was really shocked because everything was closed. Well, from what I heard, there was some sort of a plumbing issue or plumbing leak. It must have been a big one to shut down the whole food court, but that's what ended up happening, and I heard that a few of these places did reopen a couple of weeks later. I can't confirm that though because this was my last trip to Metro Center Mall while it was still open. I love that picture there with the cheeseburger and the fries and the hot dog. Now this was something that I always thought was neat. The tables throughout the food court had Metro Center Mall and Phoenix history on them and this one even mentions Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure being filmed here. Something that I never saw in person but you can see in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is the ice skating rink that used to be below the food court. There's now a movie theater underneath it. I never got to see the uh, ice skating rink, but I did see the arcade that used to be down there. And here's that Christmas tree again, and if we look down here, you can see that red couch thing I was talking about. It's not nearly the same as having a mall Santa. In the earlier footage of this Christmas tree, there were a lot of people crowded around it, but now there's hardly any people at all and they don't even seem to be paying attention to the Christmas decorations or the tree. I wanted to get a closer look at the Christmas decorations though because I'm pretty sure they've been using these for several years and like I had mentioned it seemed like this was going to be the last Christmas for Metro Center Mall. Now even though this was my last trip here while it was still open I was able to get back into Metro Center Mall after it closed. Remember those Christmas decorations? Here they are again for sale. Six months after the mall closed, they had a fixture auction and there was an open preview day to check out all of the different lots that were in the auction. So now we can get a really close look at those polar bears and penguins. And there's that red couch. And this is interesting too, they were selling as part of the lot an old Santa Claus sign. 
it's just so weird to see this stuff not out on display inside the mall. It's just in one of the empty stores now. And there seemed to be a lot of decorations that were older ones that they hadn't used in a while. It seemed like the Christmas decoration lots were some of the most popular ones for people to check out, and it would be neat to decorate your house with decorations from the mall, but where would you store this wreath? And, and where would you put it up unless you had a huge house? Those playing cards are cool. That That's a kind of a creepy Santa on the king card. Now at this point, the mall had been closed for six months, and they also had an airsoft tournament here, so there was little airsoft BBs all over the place. But it was interesting to look into and also get into some of the empty storefronts that for the entire time I had been going to Metro Center Mall had black curtains hanging in front of them. It's kind of crazy how trashed stuff is. I mean, some of it's obviously from the Airsoft tournament, but it looks like people kind of got in here and ransacked the place as well. All of this stuff you see here was part of the auction. Basically, if a storefront had its door open and the lights on, that meant it was a lot. Now this is really cool. I was able to get into the back rooms of this store. Here's something you don't get to see very often unless you've worked in a mall before. It's pretty wild how much crap is left behind. It was really great to get in here again. I didn't think I would ever see the inside of Metro Center Mall again. All of those little black pods that you see, those are airsoft hand grenades. They really did make a mess out of this place, although that's why they rented it out, was to do that. And I bet it was a ton of fun. There's also a lot of white dust all over the place, and I think that is from people breaking into the mall and screwing around with the fire extinguishers. Here's the security and information desk. And there's a good shot of all that white dust. I mean, it's pretty thick. There was so much stuff left behind in this mall for them to auction off that they ended up doing it in stages. The first set of lots were stuff that was all on the first floor, and so that's where you were allowed to go during the auction preview. Two weeks later, they ended up doing the same thing, but up on the second floor of the mall. Kinda of sad to see all the dying mall plants. Even that huge American flag was part of the auction. This was my first time being inside of a mall that had been shut down for an extended length of time. If you know there's a mall closing near you, I would keep an eye out for a fixture auction because it could be a good excuse to get back inside. Now this storefront had always had black curtains in front of it when I had come here while it was open, so I never knew what it was, but it turns out it's an old Deb store. I haven't seen a Deb store in a long time. They were a women's clothing and apparel store. You can see their old logo there, and that is a lot of pink. All of the Deb stores closed down in 2015, but I get the feeling that this one closed down earlier than that. I love the lights there above the dressing rooms. It looks like somebody wanted the D. And here's the play place. This was all up for auction as well. And this is something I was never really able to film because obviously while the mall was open there were kids playing there and I don't want to film other people's children. Now that mannequin is fantastic. There was some weird things going on in here. This was kind of a neat mall play place though. I don't typically care for these, but this one was like NASA and space themed. That is a fantastic skylight above it. 
There's also quite a bit of graffiti around. I don't understand the point of that, breaking into a mall just to spray paint. I mean, hardly anybody's gonna see it. And if you're gonna break into a mall, there's so many cooler things you could do, like, you know, film the place so everybody could see it. Walking around a dead mall or a struggling mall is definitely weird, but walking around a mall like this that's been closed down is just bizarre. Really do find some interesting stuff too, like what was the point of these barriers right here? Maybe it was part of the airsoft tournament. There's that art deco elevator. This elevator is another one of those things that once all of the malls that have these kind of elevators close, you won't ever see them again. When the mall is very quiet like this and completely empty, it seems even bigger. Here's another fantastic store that I was glad to get into. This is an old KB toy store. These all shut down in 2009. So if all of this KB toy stuff is still up, that means this place has been sitting empty that entire time. That really tells you that Metro Center Mall struggles go back several years. They were also auctioning off all of these mall kiosks and lots, and I, I wonder what you do with those. They're not going to let you put them in another mall. The S had followed off of this sign, but the one right across from it was still in pretty good shape, and those were part of the fixture auction as well. I'm sure that's what a lot of people were interested in was the old KB toy stuff. It's crazy because even though it's completely empty and gutted, you can still kind of get a feel that this was a KB Toys. You can kind of see how it would have been laid out. From what I've heard, the plan is to demolish most of this mall, which is unfortunate because it does have a lot of history in the Phoenix area. Some of the anchor store buildings will remain though. For example, the JC Penney store has already been converted into a self-storage place. Here's another old mall standard. This is an empty Spencer Gifts. That back wall there with the neon light would have been where the lava lamps and things like that were and the black lights. I'm guessing that's left over from the employees. It even has that classic Spencer Gifts tile floor. It was so eerie being in here. There were just so many weird things like, who dragged this chaise lounge out there and which store did that come out of? Remember that all for anime store? Well, here it is now, completely empty. Fortunately, they were able to move into another mall in the Phoenix area, but unfortunately that mall has now closed as well. So I'm not sure if they're still around anymore. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was filmed here, and now you're getting to witness Metro Center Mall's bogus journey. It really is a shame and a waste of a huge, beautiful building. There's an empty Mr. Rag store. I haven't seen one of those in years. Those all closed down a long time ago. This whole mall is like a giant time capsule. That right there was the entrance into the Macy's, which was originally a Goldwater's. Experiencing a mall like this when it's shut down and kind of trashed and completely empty is like watching a slow motion train wreck, except for you can kind of walk through the wreck while it's happening but not get hurt. It really is bizarre. Twenty years ago, if you looked down there, this place would have been packed. 
And it looks like they had some sort of a roof leak here. They probably cut that hole to get up in there and see what was going on. The bucket was completely dry, but that is a lot of mold around it. Besides the JCPenney becoming a self-storage place, I haven't heard of any other redevelopment plans for Metro Center Mall. All I know are the rumors that I've heard that it's planned to be demolished. It's currently still standing. However, I believe what's going to happen is the land will sell eventually, and then whoever purchases the land will probably tear the place down. It was over here that we noticed just an awful smell, and then when we took a peek in, we noticed that someone had obviously broken in and ransacked this place, and then made some weird concoction and squirted it all over the place. It's just disgusting. The smell was unbelievable. This has probably been sitting here for several months. Right next door, there was a shop that I believe used to sell like baseball and basketball caps and stuff. But what caught my eye were the old CRT televisions in the back corners. They weren't anything special, just large, I believe GE branded CRT televisions, but I see CRT televisions less and less often now, so it's always kind of fun to see them out in the wild. Based on all the news stories and social media posts that I saw about Metro Center Mall, this place is going to be sorely missed by a lot of people. Now let's head on to our third stop and our look at Arizona's Dead Mall Gold. This is Paradise Valley Mall in Phoenix, Arizona. It opened in 1979 and was developed by Westcore and Dayton Hudson Corporation, also known as Target. When I was growing up, I had an aunt and uncle that lived near this mall, so I did come here a few times as a kid. This mall is a little bit on the smaller side. It's not as big as Metro Center Mall. I had come here to film because I had gotten a lot of comments on my YouTube channel telling me that I should come here and check it out because it was a dead mall and it had been several years since I had been here so I came to check it out and what I found at the time wasn't what I would call a dead mall yet. There were a lot of empty stores but not enough that I would call it a dead mall and there was also still a lot of people walking around and some of them had shopping bags in their hands. There were also a lot of mall walkers though. Something I always loved about this mall is how architecturally interesting it is. The skylights are amazing with those pillars and the ceilings. Now the mall itself is just one floor, but all of the anchor buildings except for the Costco are two floors. This mall does have a Costco as an anchor, but unfortunately much like Metro Center Mall and its Walmart situation, the Costco isn't actually connected to the mall. It does replace an old empty anchor that was there, but they closed it off. You see what I mean though? There are still some people walking around and it looks like shopping. It's not busy, but I don't think it was dead yet. Oddly enough, the food court was one of the quietest parts of the mall. One of my fondest memories of this mall was here in the food court. Somewhere near the food court, there was a store called Captron World of Nintendo. And they had a bunch of Nintendo demo units and I believe I bought an NES game there at one point. But there's nothing like that here now. This food court definitely does score points for having a working fountain. We'll get a closer look at it later. Ah, Zap. This is the mall arcade that was there when I visited on this trip. And this is not a great arcade. This is one of the ones I was talking about earlier where it's mostly skill cranes and prize games that are all a ripoff and then a couple of actual video games. There was an air hockey table, which was kind of neat. Really not a fan of the decor in here either. Arcade games are becoming more popular again, so maybe we'll see the return of the old school mall arcade and less stuff like this sad excuse for an arcade. 
Here's another one of those huge skylights in front of the Macy's. I just love the way this mall looks. It definitely did have its more quiet areas, but again, I, I wouldn't call it a dead mall just yet. Although I don't know of any other malls besides dead malls that have psychic reading places in them that are Egyptian themed. That was always fantastic when that was there. Oh, and there's also a Things Remembered. Those are all gone now, I believe. In front of us there is the play area, and that definitely seemed to be one of the busiest parts of this mall. Unfortunately, I never really saw this mall this busy again. I checked in on Paradise Valley Mall a little over a year later, and things did seem to be getting worse. At this point, the Sears was still open, but really nobody was coming in or out. One of the busiest areas of the mall was the area in front of the Macy's. And I think I can kind of see why. It's nice and bright and there's these amazing ceilings. This teaching supply store said opening soon and it did actually eventually open. And it's one of the few new things that I can remember opening up in this mall while I was documenting it. And there's the former KB toy store. The psychic reading place was still here as well, and I always got a really good laugh at that. I think this JCPenney store had my favorite anchor entrance out of all the ones that were here. I, just, I love that dark tile. This place really did have a unique architectural style. I don't think I've seen anything like it in any of the other malls that I've ever been in. At this point, a majority of the storefronts were empty, but the amount of foot traffic still here kind of surprised me. I'll always remember this trip because this was the first time that I filmed the inside of a fountain. I had just recently gotten a GoPro, which is waterproof, and I thought it would be fun to dunk the camera into the fountain and just kind of see what it looked like on the inside. And viewers on my YouTube channel seemed to really enjoy that so it kind of became a staple of my videos moving forward that if a mall had a fountain I would film the inside of it. It's kind of neat to go back and watch the birth of the retail archaeology fountain cam. Here's something else I love at this mall, these fundraising tiles that are all over the floor in the food court. These were sold in 1988 to fund the construction of the Phoenix Multi-Generation Activity Center. The local radio station, Y95, had a part in the fundraiser, and so you'll see a lot of tiles referencing them. A year later, and now the Sears is closed. And also, foot traffic has dropped dramatically. The psychic readings lady must have seen something in one of her visions because she's closed up shop as well, and H&R Block has been replaced by Elevated Aesthetics, which I think was also closed at this point. The Things Remembered that was seen earlier is also now closed. I love that they have their name there in the tile. Also the former KB Toys, now you can see the label scar. That wasn't visible before. The food court is definitely much quieter, but surprisingly the monitors hanging from the ceiling are still going. Normally at this point in a mall's life they have those turned off. Unfortunately the fountain in the food court is no longer working. I was surprised to find change still left in there. Maybe this had just recently stopped working. During this visit is when I decided that I considered this officially a dead mall. And by that I mean I think that it was past the point of no return at this point. There wasn't anything that was going to save it. Way too many of the storefronts have closed and there's just not enough people coming in here. People just taking naps in the middle of the mall is usually another strong sign that things are coming to an end. 
Another sign is it seems like at this point the mall was no longer renewing leases. After my last trip here, I wanted to make sure that I made it out to film Christmas time at this mall because I felt in my gut that this was going to be the last Christmas for Paradise Valley Mall. I was surprised to see that they did have a mall Santa. I also really like that Christmas tree. I like how they use the skylight and the architectural details to kind of complete the tree. All in all, I think this is a pretty great Christmas display for a mall Santa even if it is kind of small. Here's a look from further back. And yeah, I think that just looks great with the sun hitting it and kind of lighting the whole area up with natural light. There really wasn't much of a line for Santa though, but that's not surprising. Who's gonna go see a dead mall Santa during a pandemic? Now there's a sight. Christmas decorations hanging down from those awesome ceilings in a dead mall outside of a closed Sears. Perfect. <laughs> and they found some way to make the dead fountain look festive. That's kind of an interesting use. I am pretty surprised about the amount of effort they put into decorating for Christmas, especially because at this point, the owners of the mall definitely knew that this was the last Christmas for Paradise Valley Mall. And you could definitely feel it in the air here as well. At this point, I was getting emails about once a week from people local to this mall telling me that another store had closed. I ended up coming back just a few months later to film Paradise Valley Mall again because I saw an article in the news stating that the city had just approved the redevelopment plans that the owners had for this mall. And that included demolishing most of it, if not all of it. This trip was about coming here and capturing as much of the mall as possible. I wanted to make sure and document things like these entryways. I love these cubed entryways. They're just so weird. I've never seen anything like that at a mall before. And unfortunately, we probably never will now. A really nice thing about this trip was once that news about the redevelopment had hit, security kind of really didn't care about people coming in and filming and taking pictures anymore. They knew that this place was doomed. This was the least amount of people I had ever seen in the mall, and it did seem like a lot of the people that were here were kind of here for the same reason I was, which was to just reminisce about the place, visit it one last time, maybe get some pictures, in my case a lot of pictures and footage, but nobody really seemed to be shopping, and there really weren't that many stores left to shop at, and some of them were already holding closing sales. At this point, there hadn't been any sort of a date put out as far as when the mall would actually be closing, but it ended up being not too much longer after this. It closed in March 2021 permanently. Not only did this mall close really quickly after the redevelopment plans were announced and approved, they moved really quickly on the demolition. They started taking this place apart in June of 2021. The other two malls that we took a look at, Fiesta Mall and Metro Center Mall, both closed before this one did, but they're both still standing. Everything we're seeing here now is a pile of rubble. Except for the JCPenney. From what I understand, it's staying open and somehow they're going to keep that intact. The future plans for the land is to turn it into a mixed-use facility, which is basically, you know, apartments, some retail, maybe some doctor's offices. That seems to be the new trend that malls are going to once they're oftentimes, you know, demolished. It seems like they have a pretty hard time turning an existing mall into something like that. A lot of people don't know this, but this mall was so interesting in its heyday that this was also a filming location for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. They shot the exterior shots of San Dimas Mall here at Paradise Valley Mall, but they didn't end up using them in the movie, unfortunately. Next evolution, environment for success. 
That is just awesome to see inside a dead mall. I definitely wanted to make sure that I took one last look at the food court as well, and I was kind of shocked when I walked around the corner. There was nothing left in here except for one place. Also, the monitors that I was surprised were working earlier are still turned on, but they all have various colors of screens of death on them. And right there is the one place left alive in the food court. This was also one of my favorite food courts at any of the malls in the Phoenix area. It really sucked to see it like this. I also wanted to make sure and get one last look at the fountain. I always thought that was just such an interesting little thing. It's so small and I don't often see fountains in food courts. There's still a little bit of change in there, surprisingly. See, there's a purple screen of death right there. Just various Windows error messages on all of the monitors. Something else I wanted to make sure in the film was the Coca-Cola carousel in the food court. Normally, I would have a hard time filming this because there would be kids on it, but it's been closed because of the pandemic for a very long time, and they obviously weren't going to reopen it now with the mall closing soon. I just always thought this was so weird. I mean, lots of malls have carousels, but I've never seen one this heavily branded before. It really is a pretty carousel. I love how it has its own little enclosure over here. Of course, you have to have a Coke machine next to the Coca-Cola carousel. Something else I wanted to make sure and capture were all of the weird little nooks and crannies that malls tend to have, like this little outdoor seating area off the food court. What I mostly saw this little area used for was employees to take a smoke break or kind of eat their lunch in peace. And I think it's nice that they had this shaded green area to do that. A lot of other malls don't have nice areas like this for the employees to take a break. Even though I don't think this was really intended for just the employees, but that's mostly who I saw use it. I did find out that those stained glass windows that are around the food court were saved. I'm hoping this statue was saved as well. It actually used to be inside the mall in front of the old Goldwater's department store and now they've moved it out here. And I just don't think very many people see it or know about it anymore. This whole mall being demolished now is still kind of shocking to me. Even though it's an older mall and it's a little on the small side, I always thought it was a gem. I just always thought it was beautiful. It seems like such a waste that it's gone now. Out of the three malls that we've covered, this one always seemed to have the least maintenance issues, at least ones you could see. It always seemed to be the cleanest, the most well-maintained out of the three, and this is the one that's now completely gone. So weird. These karaoke machines seem to be a newer addition, and I wonder if anybody ever used them. I think this has always been maybe the worst part of this mall since I started documenting it, is this arcade. I think this was a jewelry store or something originally and they just opened it up, turned it into this thing that they're calling an arcade. If you remember in the previous footage of Metro Center Mall, the little arcade there did have some actual video games, even a Street Fighter 2 cabinet. This is all scam prize games and rip-off skill cranes and then a driving game that doesn't even seem to be working. The little arcade that was in the food court was not great either, but it was a lot better than this. If you have a dead mall near you and you happen to see a news story saying that a redevelopment plan has been approved, I would go check it out as quick as you can because this mall taught me that things can go really quick from a news story to a mall closing to it being demolished. They never did open this mall up for a fixture auction viewing like they did with Metro Center Mall. They did have auctions, but everything was just online. 
So this is the last footage that I was ever able to get of Paradise Valley Mall. After seeing the footage of the three malls that I've shown you here, it's easy to get the idea that all malls in the Phoenix area are dying, but that's really not the case. There are still busy and vibrant malls in the Phoenix area, they just happen to be the newer ones. The main issue for the three malls that I've shown you here is that they just happen to be the oldest malls and we built way more retail square footage than we needed in the Phoenix area. It really is a shame that the older, more interesting malls are paying the price of that. This is a shot that I always try and film when I think or I know it's the last time that I'm going to be able to film a place and it's a shot walking out of the doors. It's always sad to me to think that this is the last time that I'll pass through these doors at Paradise Valley Mall. And I can say the same for Fiesta Mall and Metro Center Mall too. Nobody's going to be able to visit those malls again. But hopefully all of the footage that I've gathered of these places will help you remember what it's like to visit them and give you a nice little bump of nostalgia. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Sit, Coco, sit. Good dog.